Um, mm-hmm. In VC, there's a couple rules of thumb that many investors treat as dogma. For example, uh, bet on the jockey, not the horse. That's an axiom. And the meaning being invest in the founder more so than the idea. Mm-hmm. Um, similarly, people you'll often hear people say, the founder accounts for 80% of the success of a startup. And, and, and that might be true. Maybe it's not true. Um, but I don't think that there's ever been a study to determine just exactly what percent of the success the founder accounts for. How would you go about measuring the value of a founder to the overall success of a company? Well, the first thing I would do, and this is true for all of our research and any uh, scientific research, was, which is I start with secondary research. I start with who's already measured this? Now, I used to, you know, if you go back even just 10 or 15 years ago, I used to go to a library more often. I don't really have to do that anymore. Um, we go to Google Scholar or if you have access to library resources like JSTOR uh, online. Uh, those are useful research uh, methods. And you can find that there's probably somebody who's measured something like this. Are there specific attributes of founders uh, that have come up more often? You mentioned, you know, Angela Duckworth at one point. Yes, grit. Now it's, yes. And so did she find this would be something to dive into the specifics of, you know, did she find that specific attributes uh, that she associated with what she called grit did they actually correlate with the likelihood of success? OK, so uh, start with the axiom that it's probably been measured before. Mm-hmm. So start with that and see what is out there. Um, secondly, uh, remember, you probably have more data than you think. Right. Yeah. So it's not just that founder that you're evaluating. You're evaluating your whole decision making process, your whole estimation process, even how well you remember anecdotes historically. So think about the performance of your decision-making method itself, because you know what the most important decision that a VC makes, the single most important decision is how they make decisions. That's the thing that you're evaluating first, your decision-making method. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so if it, if you do find research uh, that says that, you know, uh, here's some, a specific list of observable things, characteristics of a founder that correlate well with uh, outcomes. The next question is, is, well, do I have some additional data that I'm not thinking of immediately? Can I think about this a little bit longer and get resourceful about the kind of data that might be available to me? Are there structured surveys I can give founders? Can I start providing these structured surveys to a larger set of individuals, because presumably if you're VC, you're talking to a lot of startups, right? Absolutely. So, so you, you can start tracking your own data more systematically. That's a a straightforward answer by itself. And then uh, don't be afraid to actually do the math. I mean, simple statistics with the data that you're gathering and don't assume that you need X amount to be statistically significant because that's a widely misunderstood concept. Um, a little more granular, although I know you've given a lot of detail on this, how would I go about deciding which intangible qualities actually might have the most impact on success? Well, I guess that comes back to what I mentioned earlier is, uh, I would start with, you know, just like I've done for any other client in any other field, start with that secondary research. Just think in terms of different measurement methods and different decision-making methods themselves have a return on investment. You know, just a a corollary to the most important decision is how you make decisions. The most important investment VCs are going to make is an investment in their decision making methods. That's going to be the highest return in your portfolio is just an improvement, an improvement in decision making methods themselves. If you evaluate, let's say, scores or maybe hundreds of, you know, startups a year. I don't know what, however big a VC firm might be, and you make bets on a handful or maybe a few dozen of them a year, and you get failures and successes, et cetera. Uh, think about what it would be worth if you had five or 10% less error. By that, I mean you're five or 10% less likely to approve someone who's a bad bet, to invest in someone who's a bad bet, or 
not invest in someone who would have been a good bet, right? How can I, what's it worth for a, a small error reduction? And when you do the math on that, you find out that a huge return is associated with just improving your decision-making process itself. The best way to spend 1% of your VC portfolio is to optimize the other 99%, to figure out how to make decisions about the allocation of the other 99%. Does that make sense? It does make sense. So I'm going to, based on that answer and some of the things that you've told me earlier in this discussion, it seems like, I'm paraphrasing, that the best method for measuring founder skills and abilities is this thing called the Likert scale. And I'm going to ask you to explain that in a second. But if you put that in conjunction with multiple choice, rank order, open-ended questions. So give me a little bit of high level on that. And I also then, I'm going to ask you for the other side of the coin in a second. But let me start with a little high level on that. Yeah, I, I'm actually, so for, for individuals who might not be familiar with it, the Likert scale is, you know, uh, the scale you've seen before in surveys probably where you strongly agree or strongly disagree. It's usually a seven point scale or something of that effect. Yeah. Someone makes a claim, you know, the president is doing a good job, strongly agree, strongly disagree, you know, uh, that sort of thing. Um, that's a Likert scale. And you might have seen a Likert scale with uh, um, I am satisfied with this product. You know, strongly agree, strongly disagree, seven point scale. Um, I generally actually uh, try to avoid scales like that, subjective scales like that. I, I try to, where possible, look at specific observable outcomes where th they're objective, right? Um, like, for example, how long did it take the uh, interviewee to respond to a question? Seconds, right? Uh, it, you know, that's at least objective. Uh, it, it has the uh, ability, it has uh, less of a problem with being influenced by whether or not you are a strong grader, you know, a tough grader or an easy grader, right? Those are just objective outcomes. Now, that doesn't mean that Likert scales never correlate with observable outcomes. So just remember that when you're using Likert scales, uh, you've got a two-sided measurement instrument. You've got the scale itself and the person using the scale. So you're actually measuring the performance of the person using the scale. And you might have, you know, one person in your VC firm sitting down talking to a founder and uh, another person talking to a different founder, but they just score things differently. And so in a way, you might just be evaluating the skills of those, you know, interviewers interviewing those founders, mm -hmm. right? So that's as opposed to saying, you know, um, uh, things like uh, yes or no, was there a financial projection for demand in their business plan? Um, how many, you know, what degree does the founder have? Um, how long has the founder been working on this idea? Uh, how many other VCs has the founder already talked to and been turned down, right? So, uh, those may seem like, well, they're not all entirely indicative of chance of success, but they're much more objective, right? Um, and I would like to test to see how well they correlate with observed outcomes. If somebody says, well, that's not going to tell me anything, I say, I don't know that. Prove it. So this is good because, you know, I, in reading it, I thought to myself that, oh, a Likert scale can be objective, can have specific observable outcomes. But you're, you're really saying, mm, no, that's really for trying to get your hands around subjective things. If we're doing our work in terms of finding the right employee or making choices about um, intangibles, what we really need is much more of a kind of a, a multiple choice, a rank order, stay away from open-ended questions, um, things that are, you know, frankly, measurable. Yeah. And I, you know, again, I, I'm happy to test, you know, hypotheses along those lines. Maybe Likert scales are really the better answer in some cases. So I'm, I'm fine with, you know, seeing what the objective data says about those things. I, my tendency is though, is whenever I come up with a scale or feel I have to use a Likert scale, I always feel like I'm giving up too soon. 